All right, welcome back to Godfall 101. Let's not waste any time. Uh, like and subscribe, and let's dive right in. Before we get to the videos and breaking those down, these videos will be made up from all the clips that we have so far from the PlayStation 5 event, the PC Summer event, the leaked PS4 footage, and the reveal trailer we got from the Video Game Awards back in December. So first off, we take a quick look at the Fifth Valor plate that we have seen. This has been called the Anubis on Reddit. I personally like the Jackal, but either way we get a quick couple seconds of this Valor plate wielding Eclipse, sliding out of the way and doing a shield throw. I really like the fur collar going on. Now at first I thought this might be the other Valor plate that we saw from the PlayStation 4 leak footage that we found back in February, but looking back at that video you can see that they are for sure two distinctive Valor plates. Now back then I said that it looks like either a bull or a dragon. I'm going to go with dragon. I think it would be much cooler to have a mythical creature Valor Plate in the roster. Something that we can choose from to kind of spice things up. Alright, now let's look at the five weapon types. I broke all these up and put them in order. Now I'm going to do long swords and great swords at the same time. I think we have only seen maybe one or two great swords so far, so I didn't really know how to separate those out because they're not a huge distinction on what's considered a great sword or a long sword because at any given time it seems like you can use the shield with whatever weapon so I don't know what the big difference is. So first off we start out by seeing Eclipse and we're going to see Eclipse a lot. I think Eclipse is kind of like the flagship, hey this is our poster child sword that we're going to see in the game. I mean the sword looks really really cool. It's going to be interesting to find out what each weapon will bring to the table ability wise. Now looking at the sword that Silvermane has, it's, this is what I'm going to call the boring sword. I know that all the swords can't be super amazing and cool looking. There has to be a couple that are kind of boring and plain. So this is just going to be called the boring sword. And we can also see it in the background here that the enemy is holding that hooked great sword. I think it's the great sword. And then here we also have a look at a sword that we have not seen before. This thing looks like it has 10 reverse barbs on the blades. It would not make for a very good stabbing weapon. But it would also make it hard for the enemy to cross swords against it because their blade or whatever they're using would keep getting stuck on it. It has a very floral vibe to me. It reminded me of a rose bush the first time I saw it. So this so far is probably my favorite looking great sword. I'm, I'm going to assume that this is a great sword just because it looks very massive, right? I like the blade geometry and the giant blade on the hill. You, know, you can also see some electricity coming off the blade um, during one of the jump attacks. So this sword in the hands of Silvermane looks like a very mechanical looking sword to me, so I'm just going to call it the mechanic. And we see the sword a lot in the footage as well. This is one that's been featured a bunch. We've seen it a lot. It's also featured on one of the GIFs on the Godfall website. Um, it reminds me of a sword from Final Fantasy XV, and those were very mechanic focused, so that's maybe that's why I'm just going to you know, refer to it as that. It just looks very mechanical to me. And then we go back to the Phoenix wielding the hooked great sword, and this is from the old PlayStation 4 footage that we covered back then. I think that's all the long swords and great swords, so let's go ahead and move on to the pole arms. Now we have not seen much in regards to the pole arms, but we do get a very long bladed toothy looking spear wielded by the Phoenix. Now these attacks are very wide and sweeping, they're also very slow compared to everything else. We also see the Phoenix throwing this new pole arm that we haven't seen before. So maybe each pole arm will have the ability to be thrown and maybe magically come back to you. Or you may have to retrieve the weapon afterwards, making it, making it kind of a risk reward weapon. I'm interested in seeing more pole arms, but I do think that having to go and actually retrieve it makes more interesting gameplay instead of having like a Thor's Mjolnir action going on where you throw it out and it just comes back to you. Alright, so it's hammer time. We get some pretty cool looks at a couple hammers because of the slower speed of their attacks, but we do uncover a couple cool things. So look at this thing. We have to call it the Crow, right? The Raven, maybe? Edgar? Poe? Let's call it Poe. So Poe makes a nice little AoE attack that knocks the enemies backwards. And this hammer, I don't know what to call this hammer. Maybe Pain, Death, I don't know, the Anvil? Now it's cool that... Now it's cool that this is the first time we kind of see an enemy explode afterwards. Maybe this is a perk of this particular hammer. I think if you were to hit something with it, it definitely would explode. So maybe this is just um, one of those augments that it has. But this hammer also does have a very cool look to it. It has a face depicted on the face of the hammer. I don't know if maybe this is one of the Archons or a different god. 
Now this hammer looks like a historical kabuto, or a mask worn by samurai. You can see the horns um, sweeping out here. Like It's very stylized. It looks like it has this very big grin on it. Very cool looking. Very different looking from the other hammers that we've seen. And then we have another hammer. This is a hammer with a face depicted on, on the actual head of it, right? See, this is why I was saying that the other sword was so was boring looking. Because these hammers really do look out of this world. Like, props to the art team. Alright, this last hammer here is a very futuristic look to it to me. It sends a shockwave out from the hammer. Not just the AoE that we saw before. Alright, should we now get to the weapons that Counterplay really, really likes? Okay, there are so many more clips of the dual blades than any of the other weapons. And I get it. They look really cool, and they have some cool abilities and cool utility. The first set we see, wielded by Greyhawk, shows the ropes, cables, yarn, I don't know what it is, that connects the blades to our player character. And we see a unique attack for the dual blades. This vertical helicopter spinning attack is shown multiple times, and it only happens with the dual blades. Alright, so here's the good stuff. We have Silvermane throwing out one of the blades, attached to a red glowing cable, yelling, get over here, as the enemy gets pulled towards us. Alright, so we have the ability to close gaps, um, you know, pull enemies out of big groups, Focus them down. Pretty cool ability, right? I mean, who doesn't want to do this? We also have this whirlwind attack where the player character whips the blades around themselves, attacking in a large AoE, and they're spinning on the cords that are or the cables that are attached to them. Very cool animation. Like props to the animation team, whoever is doing the combat animation. Like everything so far looks looks super super fun. All right, so that's it for the weapons from now. I would like to talk about some of the abilities and a couple other things that I noticed while watching this video again and again. Now, we don't know if these abilities are specific to Valor Plates. We don't know if they're specific to weapons or to augments or to the shield. But there are quite a few unique moves that we see in the trailer that I would like to point out. So first off, what is the shout that Silvermane does here? Is this some sort of debuff? You can see him making the shout, you know, crossing the swords. Then you can see this enemy that we that we have in front of us. Kind of, I don't know if this is bringing the enemy down. If it's just indicating that they've been debuffed, are we like drawing aggro? Like, I don't know what this is, but it is interesting that we do have other abilities that aren't just tied to, hey, hit this thing with the sword or hit this thing with the shield, because we do see a lot of that. So I'll, I'm curious to see if this is going to be something used for multiplayer. Um, some way to debuff a character so someone can come in from behind maybe do a small stun for a second still haven't seen anything about healing player characters so a lot of things out there still that we don't know but this was just kind of interesting to throw this little thing into the mix with all this you know spinning sword combat all right so we we have seen the normal captain america shield slam followed by jump stab we've seen that a lot um, now this ability is really cool looking because Silvermane clenches his fist, draws some sort of power from somewhere, summons its shield, does a little spin attack, and then does a nice satisfying shield slam at the end of it. This is a very cool animation. Um, I wish I had better quality video so I can see it a little more clearly. Um, but it's a really cool looking attack. And then of course we have this mega shield leap which seems like you could just, you know, fly for miles if you just had a shield and you're using it to fly around the battlefield like we do here. And I do want to point out in these next clips that Silvermane and Greyhawk both are glowing red in these next attacks. I don't know if this is an enemy debuff, a uh, buff that we put on ourselves. Uh, what do you think this could mean? Could this just be like a, a, per a couple second you know buff that we have? Some sort of perk when we're attacking? Maybe it's an indicator of some sort? I'm not sure, but it is interesting that we are glowing. And here is Silvermane starts to glow bright yellow. I believe that this is the ultimate or super ability that each Valor Plate has access to. Silvermane here has three ethereal swords that spin around and attack enemies nearby. Now it's interesting that they use golden light, almost like it's, you know, light from heaven coming down and blessing these Valor Plates to do incredible feats of strength. Um, and I think maybe that ha might have some merit to it, but let's talk about that after we talk about all the abilities, okay? Alright, I think this is probably my favorite ability that we've seen so far. This is just a straight up punch to the face. You just gotta yell, GRIT YOUR TEETH! Alright, check this out. Here, the Phoenix sends out a huge wave of blue energy coming from the shield. Now this may be an augment added to the shield, or maybe a higher tier rarity shield. Every time we've seen the shield, it has been the same shield model. 
I'm really surprised at how often the shield has been used for the little footage that we do have, but we've seen it thrown, we've seen it used as a slam. We see it over and over again, but there's only one model. I can't believe in a game where we've already seen, you know, the amount of weapons that we have seen for the short seconds of, tr of footage that we do have, that the team would only have one shield model. That seems really weird to me. Maybe they're just saving that, but it is weird that we've seen the shield used while we are carrying our dual blades. We've seen it used while we have our hammers, uh, while we have our spears. It seems like we can use the shield whenever we do, whenever we want. I don't know if there's some kind of cooldown associated with the shield, but it's interesting that every single Valor play that we have seen is able to use that. So from the very first trailer, we saw Phoenix ignite um, the sword eclipse and it burst into flames, and we kind of get a glimpse of that here in game. Finally, we can see the sword. Um, having some sort of flame or fire effect on it. I'm guessing there will be more in the future. But we do get to see that here in game. Now this is really fast and really hard to see. But it looks like Greyhawk using its ultimate ability. Because it's turning that bright yellow. Raising up into the air. But then the video cuts. There's so many cuts in these video videos. They're so fast. So I want to point out this animation here. Where Silvermane throws the mechanic sword up into the air. While it's glowing like it's on fire catches it before slamming it into the ground and the AOE explodes into a blue energy. Super cool animation. Like I dig that, you know, we're throwing things into the air, jumping up, catching them, slamming down. That's just a very epic, like superhero type of move. So I'm really digging on that. And then we get another look at the sword flip stab into the ground move. This time the sword is not glowing and it looks like some sort of frost effect is applied before we go into some sort of teleporting ability. Okay, so that's it for abilities for now. We're going to move on from that. One thing I do want to talk about is evading. The last video I talked about this looking very button mashy, just because we haven't seen a lot of the skill-based combat yet, because it's not um, flashy and interesting to see a player character roll out of the way 20 times, get one stab in, then back up. So I, I understand why they would cut it that way. But going through this, we do see a lot of times where our character rolls out of the way, dives out of the way, or does a backwards flip, right? Rolling and diving is a hallmark of the Souls genre and Legend of Zelda, I guess. So it is nice to have a glimpse at that part of the gameplay. It isn't as heavily featured, but you know, it, I don't think it can be. So I definitely would like to see more and figure out what the gameplay is actually gonna be like. We do have a small glimpse of an enemy actually parrying a player character attack, but that was from the PlayStation 4 leaked footage. So I don't even know if that's still in the game, right? I mean, that was so long ago that could have been cut because it wasn't fun or it just wasn't working. So I don't know. It, it is nice to see the evading in the game. I just want to see what an actual combat encounter feels like. All right, moving on. I want to talk about critical hit indicators because I think that's what these are. So for some of the attacks we've seen in the footage, there appears a large golden X across the enemy. And I wonder if this signifies a critical strike. What do you think? Is this something different? Is this just like a big strike? Is it a critical strike? Is this when, when a character dies? To me, this indicates like this is going to be that a satisfying hit sound, that satisfying marker that, hey, you did what you were supposed to, you got a critical strike, we're rewarding it, we're, we are rewarding you with this, you know, visual and audible cue, because, you know, we need that as players, especially for looter shooters, we're looking for those little hits of dopamine, that, hey, you got a head, you got a headshot, right, that's the same thing, all right, um, I don't know if I really want to, yeah, no, I want to talk about this, cape customization, if we cannot customize our Valor Plates because they are set Valor Plates, how cool would it be if we at least got to change up the way our capes looked? Different sigils, different, you know, color variations. It would be cool if we got to change up what the capes look like. I mean, they're there. You could put Mountain Dew advertisement on it for all I care, but let us be able to change something about our Valor Plates. So really quick, one of the things I've been thinking and wondering is what's going to make me choose one plate over another, right? Will they offer any playstyle that another set does not? So far, they can all use the same weapons. They can use the shield. The only thing different we have seen is the ultimate move when they turn gold. And we've only seen a very small example of that. So is it just looks? What else is going to drive me to play 12 different Valor Plates? I would hate for it to just be numbers. I would love to have interesting attacks for each of the Valor Plates. Something different that sets them apart. Especially on the battlefield when you're playing with other people. 
There's 12 different Valor Plates. You know, that's not a lot. I'm sure it's easy to memorize, but there's got to be some visual distinctness to them. Something that says, hey, you know, are you a are you a Phoenix main? Are you a Silver main main? Silver main main? That's going to be fun to say, if that's even a thing. But just something that shows the variety and how different they're going to be. Okay, the official Godfall Twitter account tweeted out today, quote, achieve apotheosis, end quote. So this tweet was very short and sweet, and it got me thinking, it's like, okay, so what is apotheosis for people that don't know? It's the perfect form or example of something, or elevation to divine status. Now, I thought that was interesting, because as we look back at those abilities that we were doing, it, we're getting like this golden glowy light, usually associated with heaven, I guess. Um, so are we, as a player, as an avatar, trying to achieve godhood? Are we trying to achieve divine status? Cosmira has died. The 12 Archons, who are considered gods, have been pushed back into the realm of spirit and dreams. Is there a correlation there? Are we grasping at straws? Yes, of course we're grasping at straws, because that's what we do. That was a lot of talk about weapons, abilities, capes, critical hit markers. Thanks for hanging out. And thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> So what do you think about the weapons and abilities that were shown? Which is your favorite? Which do you not like? Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, please look out for each other.